Welcome back to another Let's See What Happens. Today, I'm up a canyon in the middle of the winter time next to this river. It is very cold up here. It is well below 32 degrees. And I wanna ask the question, why is this river not frozen when there's plenty of water up here that's frozen and it's well below freezing? The hypothesis that I hear all the time to why some rivers don't freeze in the winter time is because the fact that rivers are moving. I want to see if that is true. Today I'm going to devise an experiment to see if moving water freezes slower than stationary water. Life is full of rules. Small or big, they impact almost every part of our lives. Together, let's see what happens when we break the small everyday rules. Now, the way I'm going to test whether or not moving water freezes slower than stationary water is I have these two jars. They're both filled up with the exact same amount of water. They're both going to be on cardboard boxes and they're both going to be in my freezer. Now, the only difference is that this jar will be stirred continuously while this jar will be stationary. Now, if you want to see how I made this device, click in the card above. But basically what I've done is I put a fan with some magnets on it and I've taken this magnet and when I put that white magnet in the jar, it will attach to the magnets below. As I get the fan up to speed, you can see it starts stirring the, the water reasonably vigorously. Okay, I'm now gonna put both these jars in the freezer and I'm going to check every 15 minutes until both of these jars are frozen through. Now, before I do this though, I want you to pause this video, go in the comments sections below, and I want you to predict which of these two jars will freeze first, or if you think they'll freeze at the exact same time. Do you think the jar that's being stirred continuously will freeze first? or the jar that is stationary. So I've performed this experiment now about 20 different times. I had to test multiple different variables like location in the freezer or how much water I put into it. But in doing so, I ran into a bunch of problems along the way. In the earlier clip, I said I would check it every 15 minutes, which was way too long. Not only would it take a lot of my time, but every time I'd open the door, more warm air would enter and it would actually prevent the water from freezing. I also had to keep a lot of food in the freezer to increase the thermal mass to allow enough cold to be retained to be able to freeze the water as well. In the end, I was able to um, control all those variables and get enough precise measurements to draw some interesting conclusions. I was able to show that moving water actually froze faster than stationary water. Let me say that again. Moving water froze faster than stationary water. So it took for about 775 grams of water. It took about four hours for the moving water to freeze and about four hours and 45 minutes for the stationary water to freeze. So it took about 45 extra minutes for the stationary water to freeze. All right, so this is a good example of the moving one is completely frozen through. But the stationary one, you can see that that center part isn't frozen yet. You can see bubbles, in fact, moving in there, showing that it's not frozen. These results might surprise you, but let's go over a few different reasons why these, act these results actually make sense. So water in a mason jar has to freeze from the outside to the core. And this, what this means is that the newly formed ice on the outside, which is somewhere around 20 to 30 degrees, is actually significantly warmer than the freezer temperature of about zero degrees. This ice actually acts as an insulator to the core water. The moving water, on the other hand, doesn't start to freeze nearly as fast as the stationary water, meaning that there is no ice layering that is acting as an insulator. 
Another reason why moving water would freeze faster is because as it's being stirred, it increases the surface area, which allows for greater interactions between the water and the air. One reason why moving water actually freeze slower um, that I hear a lot of people talk about um, is that moving water will create friction, which then the friction creates heat. Well, this is very well true. I want to address about how much heat this friction would cause. The fan that I was using to heat up the, or to, to stir the water is a 1.6 uh, watt fan. Now, to give you some reference, um, about 80 watts is how much a standard candle produces. So this um, fan produces less heat than about 50 times less heat than a candle does. Now, that's also assuming that all the energy that this produces is going into the water. Well, that's not true. So if we assume maybe about 50% of the energy from this fan goes into the water, because some of it's going into actually like the air friction from the fan and internal friction of the, the moving parts, so if we assume just 50% of the energy goes into um, the water, that would be the equivalent of lighting a candle for about two and a half minutes. Well, two and a half minutes will heat up a little bit of water. It doesn't um, heat it up enough to counteract all the other points that I've previously talked about. So going back to the question at the beginning of this video of do rivers not freeze in the winter time because they're moving? Now, this, the answer is a little bit more complicated, but the short answer is no. It's not just because they are moving. It's due to a lot of other factors, like the thermal mass and the source of the water um, and other different variables like that. So if you have any questions about what I did or how I did it or s more specific results that I got, please ask those questions in the comments and I would love to answer them for you. As always, please like this video, share it with your friends, um, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. This helps me create more content like this.